Now we're going to look at the MLA, Modern Language Association, and it's quite different from the APA. But before we do that, let's look at the changes that have recently happened in the MLA, that is the 8th edition, from the 7th edition to the 8th edition. What are the changes? Let's take a look at the changes for referencing books. So in the reference list, if we look at the reference list, we're going to have some things are similar and some things are different. So for the book reference, Jacob Allen is the author, of course, and then The Pleasures of Reading and Age of Distraction, Oxford UP. So here we've got this Oxford UP. If we look down at the old way, we had Oxford with a colon, and then Oxford UP, and then this print here. So we've simplified on the book side. In this version, only the most essential information is being included. The author's name, the book title, the publisher, and the date. And something that's quite different is about the city. Note, the city of publication is not needed, and the medium of publication is limited, eliminated. It used to be we have to have the very specific detail, such as the city, Oxford, such as what is the medium, what is this? It's print, the printed book. Now we get it much more simplified. So this is the new way. The author, the name of the book, then Oxford UP, which is the publisher, and then the date. So I got that a little bit confused there. That's not actually city, that's the publisher. Let's take a look at the journal name changes inside the reference list. So in this case, the new approach is the author's name, and then the in history, which is the chapter or the article that's inside of something bigger. And then here is the bigger unit, that's the container. This is the actual, in this case, a journal. And then we have volume with B-O-L and number with N-O. You write them out with commas. Spring 2001 pages, so from what page to what page. So in this case, volume 24 and number 2 and the page number 620 to 626. The old way to do this would at the beginning be similar. We have the quotation marks because this is a smaller part of a larger container. Here is the larger container and we use underline or italic. Then we would have had 242 which would have been the volume and the number. Then we would have had spring 2001 inside parentheses like this. So we eliminate the parentheses. We add the PP for page numbers, P for one page, PP for multiple pages. And for the volume and the number, we write them out now, very simple with a period and then a comma in between. So this parentheses, this will be the biggest change you probably notice around the date and then the colon. This is a big change, especially if you've used the MLA for many years, that parentheses around that date is just quite normal. And in fact, if you use Google Scholar to grab a reference, it will probably still be using this old way, but that is now eliminated. Okay, let's take a look at this really useful graphic. This is a good idea of how the MLA is trying to function. The MLA is trying to give you a kind of rule of thumb, a general idea of how to make your references clear. Of course, the goal always is to help the reader find the material you're citing. That's the main goal. So the MLA is trying to give you kind of an outline. How do you do that? Well, we've got these general rules. Author, after author you have a period. Title of the source, then a period. That source may be inside another container, such as a journal article inside a journal. 
Or how about a chapter inside a book? So after this period here, then we have the container. That container has a comma if you have something more like, are there other contributors to this? Is there something more to it? Is there a version number or a number? Is there a publisher? If you have any of these, then you use the comma. Then you get down to the final piece, which is going to be the date and possibly the location. And then you end with a period. So you've got this period, period, whoops, period, a period. And then from here down, you're separating everything with a comma. And so we begin with this kind of idea of a chunk of information, a chunk of information. Then here is the description of this whole container. What is this container? That is what the MLA is always emphasizing. What is the container? How can I find that container? How can I find the book that has the chapter you're citing? How can I find the journal that's having the article you're citing? How can I find the video or the film that has the little piece of dialogue you're citing? So this is the MLA's emphasis 